Welcome back to another episode of the Christian Apologist Podcast. I am your host, Richard Long. So glad you could join us today. You know, today, it's it's been a really kind of crazy day for me. I keep getting responses from atheists on uh, either my YouTube channel or just emails. And it's really kind of odd because most of them are saying the same thing. I don't know what's going on in the atheist world or, or if there's just happens to be me for this week. I have no idea. But they keep talking about, you know, Bible contradictions and how, you know, we don't even know if we had the right manuscript and if the manuscript's been changed and um, different parts in the Bible, especially the New Testament, where, you know, especially the part about Jesus's resurrection, where it says that, you know, uh, one woman went, two women went, uh, somebody saw angels, someone didn't you know, just these contradictions that are in the Bible. And to top it all off, we don't even know, according to them, if we're reading the right manuscripts or if it has been changed. And these are very good, valid questions to ask and to discover and to dig into. And so that's pretty much what we're going to try to do today. And so first off, I'm going to pop it up on the screen right over here in this corner. I'm going to pop it up because I already got some slideshows made for this. So we're going to pop it up and we're going to go through some of these slideshows. And um, we're going to see where the evidence leads. And now when I say where the evidence leads, it's, you know, it's, it's a deduction of what we do know and what we don't know is how we get to God being, you know, the God and and Jesus being whom he claimed to be. So that's what we're going to do today is we're just going to just deduct some things until we can get to the truth. And that's what it's all about is getting to the truth. So here we go. It's coming up on the screen any second now. So the gospels, do the gospels defer on details? Okay, well, first off, as you can see right here, different details are told by a different perspective. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke, um, John wrote John, Matthew wrote Matthew. These were different people who saw things from a different perspective. And we're going to dig into that a little bit more later. And I'll show you what we're talking about a little bit more into detail. Um. If they all had the exact same detail, if all of them told the exact same story, word for word, bit for bit, detail for detail, we would be sitting there saying, oh, that's fraud. They sat down together and they came up with the story and they wrote it together. That's what we would say. But that's not what happened when the gospel writers wrote the gospels. They weren't together. They weren't writing it together. And so, yeah, different details from different perspectives of what we were talking about before. If it was all the same, it would look like fraud. And does different details mean that the actual event didn't happen? Now, some of you might say, well, it could, and some say it maybe not. But we're going to dig into that a little bit more. But my answer is, of course, no. It does not mean that the actual true event didn't happen. Okay, so we are going to talk about the contradictions in the Bible. So let's get into that first. I'm going to pull this back up over here, the biblical contradictions. So here's the things that you have to ask yourself when you're talking about, if you think you see a contradiction, here's some things that you need to think about. Who wrote each book? Because like we were talking about, Each person is going to write something from their own perspective, okay? Um, Writings, uh, if the writing did come from the same author, for instance, okay, it doesn't mean you're going to get the exact same detail. For instance, when I go do speaking events or even when I do podcast videos or YouTube videos, okay, I can be talking about the same thing, but I'm going to leave out different details. I'm going to add details. I'm going to tell the stories a little bit different. They're not always going to be the same. So, like, if uh, let's just use college. So, if I go speak at Texas Tech University, okay, and I present to them the Stanford God presentation, 
And then I go to West Texas A&M down in Canyon, Texas. Okay, let's say I go there next. And I speak there. Now, I'm going to tell the exact same presentation, the Stand for God presentation, but my wording is going to change. My details are going to change. My stories are going to change. Now, does that mean that I didn't speak at either one of these events because I gave two different types of presentations, but it was all basically the, with the same narrative? Of course not. And it's the same thing with the Bible. Um, added or subtracted detailed information does not mean it's a contradiction. Like I was just talking about, if I go to two different colleges, three different colleges, four different colleges, whatever it might be, and if I'm giving different detailed information along the way, leaving some out, adding some in, it doesn't mean that the presentation wasn't presented. I just gave different details. Um, every scholar agrees that the Bible is without any, okay, and let me rephrase that again, any contradictions. So all the scholars agree to this. And would a minute contradiction discredit the facts of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? No, it would not. Because the narrative is all the same. That Jesus Christ was the Son of God. He died on a cross. He rose to life. And He is our Lord and Savior. And that is the narrative of the Gospels. And so even though minute details might seem like a contradiction, but they're not, they're from different perspectives, would not mean and does not mean that the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ did not occur. In fact, even, <clears throat> sorry, Bart Ehrman, who is known as, right up here, who is known as the great skeptic, he even said and agrees that the New Testament writings are reliable. Now, that does not mean that he is a Christian or that he believes in it. In fact, he's an atheist. He claims to be somewhat agnostic, but he's an atheist. But it does not mean that uh, he agrees with it. He's just saying that as far as history is concerned, these people, and we're just going to talk about the Gospels, the four Gospels, these people did believe this about Jesus of Nazareth and did write these things. In fact, in his book, uh, page 252, Misquoting Jesus, he says, The essential Christian beliefs are not affected by the textual variance and uh, in the manuscript traditions of the New Testament. So he's saying that even though the textual differences, the details, what we were talking about, how some details are different than the others, he's saying that even though those are different, it does not affect Christianity as an actual belief. And so I'm going to pull up this next slide because I believe this is the best way to say it because not also do they, you know, quote like, oh, um, you know, it's uh, there's contradictions. Um, we don't know if we have the right copies, which we're going to get into here in a second. And they also claim that Christianity seems to be a copied religion from other older religions. This is the claim that a lot of people make because a lot of people say, well, this religion, and in fact, I heard, heard one guy say that if you took all the religions and put them into a boiling pot, most of them will sound a lot of alike. And that's possible. But does it mean that one's copied from another? Could be. I don't think so. And if you look at this slide coming up right now, we're going to get into this. So is Christianity a copied religion? Let's find out. So I want you to think about these things as they're coming up. I want you to imagine there's a ship in the early 1900s that sunk. The ship's name started with a T. The ship was deemed unsinkable. You're starting to, starting to get the brain going. You're starting to get some ideas here. The ship was approximately 800 feet in length and considered the grandest ship of its time. The ship was also carrying over 2,000 passengers. Now, here's the kicker. The ship was hit, hit an iceberg 400 nautical miles from Newfoundland. So is it starting to sink in yet? A ship in the 1900s, a sunk, hit an iceberg, um, 800 feet long, over 2,000 people. Considered unsinkable, started with a T. Getting any ideas yet? The ship sunk on an April night in the North Atlantic. 
you should be getting a pretty close to idea. The ship didn't even have enough lifeboats on board for all the passengers. So now, I'm pretty sure we're all thinking about the same thing, aren't we? We're all thinking about the Titanic. No, not the Titanic. This is a book called The Wreck of the Titan. This book was written 14 years before the Titanic took to sea. It was written in 1898. The Titanic didn't sink until 1912. It wasn't even until 1912. But look all at all these coincidences, all these details that seem to fit the Titanic. Even the name, The Wreck of the Titan. The Titan. I mean, look at the picture of the book. Look at the picture of the uh, boat, the ship, on the cover of the book. It even looks like the Titanic. Tell me these aren't some crazy coincidences. But does it mean that this guy wrote the book? And so then they built the Titanic and caused it to happen exactly the way the book said it was to happen? No. Just because two things look a lot alike doesn't mean one was stolen from the other. You would think somebody saw or lived back in the days of the Titanic or saw the movie The Titanic and then wrote this book, The Wreck of the Titan, and copied all the details, but you can't say that when this book was written before the Titanic even set sail. So, no, I don't think that, um, you know, just because some religions sound quite a bit alike means that one is copied from another. Are some? Sure, I can't sit there and say none of them are, but you can't sit there and say all of them are. You can't take aggregate data and apply it to each, each individual religion. You can't do that. And look at this. We're going to pull this one up, too how we were talking about all the different details. So these were the writings on the newspaper clippings um, right after the Titanic sunk. And I just want you to pay attention to some of these details. This one right off the bat says, all the Titanic passengers are safe. They were all, tra well, not all, but it says transferred in lifeboats at sea. This one says, the Titanic's death list, 1,601, only 739 are saved. Now, this one says, let me see here, 1,250 perished. So we got 1,601, we got all are saved, we got 1,250 died. Let's see what's next. This one says, I'm going to have to blow this one up, I can't even read it. Anybody else read it? Let's see here. I got bad eyesight. Um, it looks like... Um, 1800, 1900, we're dead. That was wrong. Correct me in the comments. I can't, I can't read that one that good. Um, here's another one that says no lives are lost. Two different newspapers. Here's another one. 1304 are missing. Um, here's another one. 1500 were missing. Uh, 1800 lives are reported lost. So it just goes to show you that you can't go off of the details when it comes to that, you got to go off the main point. The main point, the main narrative in this case is the Titanic sunk, hit an iceberg, and many people lives were lost at sea. And it's the same thing with the, the Jesus with the Gospels. We're not too worried about the details because they're told from different perspectives, just like you can see the paper clippings. They're told from different details, but the main narrative is the same, that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That Jesus of Nazareth did die on a cross, that Jesus of Nazareth did rise from the dead, and Jesus of Nazareth is the Lord of Lords and is our Savior. So, when it boils down to it, though, how do we know that we have the right manuscript? How do we know it wasn't altered? Those are good questions. And I'm sure even many Christians have asked these questions. I have. How do we know? So how can we trust copies of the scripts? How do we know like it wasn't passed down and changed? So let's go back up here again. Let's look at the slide, and we're going to go through this together. So imagine this is the original manuscript, okay? 
And what God did is God said, you're going to get a copy, 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 and it goes on and on for many, many copies. Now, why would God do that? Because if we kept the original, if somebody actually had the original, what could they do with it? They could alter it. They could change it. They could destroy it. There were things that they could do to completely, like, obliterate Christianity completely. So technically, by God making copies and passing them around other manuscripts and not keeping the original, he preserved the original, if that makes any sense. Because if the original was still around, we could change it, we could alter it, we could destroy it, there's things we could do. But since it's not around and there's many, many copies made, he actually preserved the original by making these copies. Now, here's where we go into some of the uh, errors in the Bible. Are there errors in the Bible? Absolutely. And I know some of you Christians are not going to agree with this, but there are errors in the Bible. But the good thing is, is that all the known errors, scholars know about it and they've corrected them already. But I just want to show like how even small errors are not going to get away from what the narrative of the verse or the Bible is. So let's say copy one said, be still, and you can see that the word no there is misspelled, and it says that I am God, okay? Copy two says the same thing, but the, mis but the misspelling is in a different place, okay? The error is in a different place. Copy three, it says the same thing, but the error is in another different place. And copy four says the same thing, but the error is in a different place. Can we look at this and say, we know for a fact what the original says? Absolutely, we can. We can look at that and we can know what the original says without a shadow of a doubt. And like I said, the New Testament documents, they actually have fewer errors than the ones that we just listed. They're fewer than the ones we just listed, the actual errors. Not contradictions, but errors like this. And the scholars have fixed them, and they say that they've gotten them all. And, well, they're the professionals, so I we've got another choice but to believe them and to know that they're telling the truth because we can go back and look at different manuscripts. So, for instance, if I had a manuscript, and if you had a manuscript, and, and two other people had manuscripts, okay, and I went to alter mine, and we all got together, and I said, well, mine says this, but yet all y'all say the exact same, and mine was the only one that said anything different. What would be the conclusion? You would look at me, and you would say, Richard, you heretic. You changed your copy. That's how God preserved the original manuscript by destroying the original manuscript and just giving us a bunch of copies so we can go off of it. So that way, it doesn't matter where in the world. It's like today, okay? I know back then it wasn't like today, but let's use today for an instance. If uh, my book should be coming out, thankfully, I actually got my first few copies in. I wish I had one in here with me, and I'll show you. But I, they give you like you know a couple of free copies just so you can have it about, and you can look through it and make sure it looks good, and then they start putting it out for distribution. But anyways... Let's say I had these 10 books, okay? And I passed out nine of them and I kept one to myself. And what I ended up doing was I ended up going back in there and I ended up scribbling out some things, tearing out some pages, getting rid of some words, um, getting rid of some important information and things like that. Now, here it is 20 years later, all 10 of us, the nine people I passed these books out to and myself, we all get together at a little get together at a Starbucks or wherever, and we're going over this book together. And I start telling them, hey, well, this came out different. Mine, mine doesn't say that. This is what mine says. But yet all nine of them had the exact same writing in theirs. They're going to know I'm the one that altered mine. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They would know that they have the good manuscript, the good writing, and I'm the one that has the bad one. I'm the one that has the altered one because they know that's the original because of all the copies matching each other, even though the original is no longer to be found, which it is. It's right here on my computer. But let's just say it wasn't. That's how they would know. And that's how scholars know and theologians know 
that they have the right ones. So no, there's no contradictions in the Bible. You can point out any verse you want to in the Bible. Send it in a comment down below. Send it to an email, however you want to do it. But you show me a contradiction, and I will show you it's not a contradiction. It's just one of two things. One, it's a different perspective. Or two, it's the same writer, and they just left out or added details. That's all there is to it. Um, three, no, all religions, just because some of them might sound similar in areas, doesn't mean that they're copied from one another. We can look at the Titanic and the Wreck of the Titan stories and see things like that. Um, also, in minor details, look at the World Trade Center. Um, I don't know if some of you should be alive that were alive back then when it happened. I know I was. I was in the military when it happened. But right after it happened, or right after the news started coming out, like <clears throat> literally the buildings were still like in the process of you know coming down and everything else. I mean, we heard that it was military planes. We heard that it was commercial airlines. We heard uh, commercial airlines look like they had missiles attached to them. We heard there was explosions before the airplanes hit the buildings. Um, there was all kinds of things we heard. Now, were any of these people lying? No, they weren't lying. They were just saying things from what they saw from different details. And it's the same thing with the Bible. Um, and so... I don't believe there's, I know there's no contradictions. Um, yes, there are errors in the Bibles, but they've been corrected, and the errors are minor, and it doesn't even affect Christianity as a whole. Even Bart Ehrman, the great skeptic, says this. And so I think with all these things combined, I think it's very, very accurate to say that the Bible, the Bible that we have now and the canons that are in it, is very reliable, very trustworthy. And Christianity is not a copied religion with contradictions. If you think so, change my mind. I am up for the truth. So it is possible for people to change my mind. Change my mind. Leave comments. Send me emails. Do whatever you need to do. You all have a blessed week, and God bless.